the five. Touchdown, Fucking Orlando. Welcome to That's Good Sports, where I never do NCAA March Madness coverage. I'm Brandon. I hope to sell out one day the way Johnny Manziel sold out the Manziel jerseys in the Memphis Express store, Perna. That's right, before he ever threw a pass in an official AAF game, Johnny Football's jersey sold out of the Express Team store. And that's according to the Peoples. Colin Peoples on Twitter. If you're here for dad jokes, dick jokes, and a full AAF Week 7 recap, well, you landed in football heaven, and I'm about to touch your insides like a big winged angel, and I mean that in the most appropriate way possible. Let's get sports. Please, I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's free, click the notification button so you know when I make fucking videos. Not fucking videos, but videos. You know what I mean. I do have big dick Patreon shout outs for Chris with a huge $20 donation. Also, thanks for the message, Chris. I truly appreci appreciate it, even though I can't talk. Joanne Hazelwood with a lucky $7 donation and Nick Robertson. Patreon is how this channel stays alive. It's how I pay the bills to keep on these bright lights for this show. And uh, you can do that at patreon.com slash that's good sports. I truly, Truly am grateful for everyone donating to the show. Game one, the Orlando Apollo Creeds to defeat the legends Ivan Drago's son, 36 to six. Well, Aaron Murray proved me wrong as he looked sharp to start this game. In fact, he and Garrett Gilbert did something that has never been done in the AAF. They both finished their opening series with perfect passing. Each QB was seven for seven, but Aaron Murray was too stupid to throw for 77 yards. Unlike the far superior Garrett Gilbert, which would come back to haunt Murray. 43 passing yards, Aaron? You think throwing for two numbers that add up to seven is the same as throwing for lucky sevens? Are you trying to get benched? Both offenses scored on their opening possession, but the legends failed on the two-point conversion, basically making their touchdown a waste. Those two points were very costly, especially when you consider the legends only lost by 30 points and never scored again in the game. Uh, that wouldn't have been true, but Aaron Murray threw an interception on the goal line, so proving me right, which was so painful his fucking head just started bleeding. <laughs> Garrett Gilbert's sister, Sarah, ruined Roseanne's life in TV com comeback, the same way Garrett ruined Aaron Murray's life, who was eventually benched for Matt Sims, and then Gilbert, in true Gilbert fashion, ruined Sims' comeback by never easing up on the throttle. And if you've actually been watching the AAF games, you may have noticed Marvin Lewis, who calls the games, mentions quite a few former Cincinnati Bengals during his commentary, who now play in the Alliance. He mentioned two and back-to-back -back plays in this game. I noticed it, and then he got called out for it. Yeah, Jeff Luke did a nice job. Great player at the University of Cincinnati. Had him in training camp with us with the Cincinnati Bengals. And again, getting an opportunity to prove here that he deserves a second look in the National Football League. Started out in Jacksonville with the Jaguars and then came to us later in Cincinnati. I called him Luck. It is Luke. Thank yeah. you for correcting me there, Coach. The big fella, number 95, David Dean, the backup nose tackle, first in on the stop. David Dean, another former Cincinnati Bengal there, uh, drafted by us and played and did a nice job for us. He's a rotation guy in our defensive line, defensive tackle room. How come there's so many Bengals in this league? <laughs> I'm not sure about that, Mark. <laughs> I'm sitting here beside you. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason. And I have never loved Marvin Lewis more laughing at himself, then self-deprecating in his pants with the comment about how Lewis is now an AAF commentator and no longer a, a head coach. But he wasn't even done listing former Bengals. Mark, I'm afraid to tell you that Scott Orndorff also spent some time in Cincinnati. <laughs> afraid to tell you that now, buddy. Also a pit kid. A pit kid. I actually, yeah, yeah. I actually wrestled against his father in high school, and I actually won. Apollo's running back, uh, Davion Smith, almost nailed his Trent Richardson impression in this game. He scored three rushing touchdowns and converted a two-point play. Uh, the Apollos converted three two-point plays, which is basically an extra touchdown, and Smith finished with just 40 rushing yards and a 3.1 average per carry. 
In order to have a perfect Trent Richardson impression though, you must keep your yards per carry under three yards. The Salt Lame Stallions lose to the San Antonio Commanders. That's right, I said Salt Lame Stallions who lost again in a close game, 19 to 15. It wasn't all quarterback Josh Woodrum's fault in this loss. Uh, he had streaks of pretty good play, but he's also just too inaccurate at times and not clutching up. There were three passes in the first half of this game where I thought, shit, if Woodrum leads his receiver or puts the ball where it's supposed to be, that's a touchdown or at the very least a huge game. Personally, I think Josh should have both the wood and the rum removed from his last name. Just call him Josh Bushlight. Well, let how clever that joke is sink in your brain. Logan Woodside isn't the flashiest quarterback, but he knows how to get into opponents' heads. He starts by taunting the defense with his audibles, telling defenders where they're going to live uh, when he's done with them. Trailer! 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 Then he convinces them they're playing baseball by yelling the names of baseball managers. And finally, he fucks them like Dick Cheney and references his favorite film of 2018, before shotgunning their faces into submission. Hey, Vice, Vice, if he goes out. Bingo, shot! Woodside with a shoulder fake over the corner of the end zone. And it's caught! What a grab! Are you serious, Mikhail McKay with the first touchdown of the game? On the next play, Josh Woodrum kills a would-be touchdown by not leading his receiver here. And then running back Joel Bonio fumbles. The Stallions recovered and settled for a field goal. Like they do, the Stallions hung in this game, and they put together a great defensive stand early in the fourth quarter, forcing the Commanders to punt from their own end zone, but a roughing the punter penalty saved the Commanders. Evening out a roughing the passer penalty that reversed a Commander's interception in the first half. That didn't matter though, because the Stallions sacked the ever-living shit out of Logan Woodside on third down. The Stallions defensive front is so good, this guy literally walks backwards into sacks. This might be my favorite sack I have ever seen. Woodside was injured there, which is a shame, but for the first time this season, backup quarterback Marquise Williams comes in and plays when the starter is hurt and not when the coach was just trying to fuck up his team's offensive momentum. He hit running back Trey Williams, the old Williams to Williams connection, which obviously goes the distance to give the commanders a lead in the fourth quarter. Somebody please change the name of the end zone to Williamsburg when these two are on the field. Again, Josh Woodrum was inaccurate early, but led a very impressive fourth quarter drive that included a, a big pass to tight end Nick Truesdell, a clutch fourth down conversion pass to DeMornay Pearson L, and a touchdown pass to Russell running back newbie. Insert joke about how he's not a noob after scoring touchdowns in back-to-back -back weeks for the Stallions. Basically, this game continued each team's trajectory from previous play this season. The Stallions offense had a chance to win, but too many mistakes and a quarterback who is not clutch throws a pick two on the two point conversion, which took away any chance for the Stallions to do an onside conversion or let their defensive line get them the ball back. And the commander's defense forced turnovers like an aggressive baker. Another interception and a couple forced fumbles. J. Roan Elliott is only a half sack behind Carter Schultz now. And Devontae Bosby is tied with the league leading four interceptions. Because I guess game winning picks on two point plays don't count as interceptions. Bosby should have five AAF. The commander's opportunistic defense may carry them to the championship. Next, please, Ariana, San Diego Fleet at Arizona Hotshots, Fleet lose. This was a matchup of two teams with a 3-3 three and three record trying to make a run for the playoffs. The lesson from today, Arizona can run the shit out of the football when they want to. They got 64 yards from Jarrell Presley, another 54 from Tim Cook, AKA Tim Apple. Great job at the Apple event today, by the way, Tim. Looking forward to the Apple TV Plus. 44 from their quarterback, John Wolford on the ground, a touchdown run from backup quarterback, Trevor Knight, and a total of 189 yards on the ground. Wolford was efficient. We all, that's what you say. Wolford was efficient every week. Uh, 15 of 19 passing with a couple of touchdown passes, including this one to Thomas Duarte. Some say Duarte, but I think it's Duarte on a camera angle that makes you feel like you're going to snap your neck trying to follow the ball. 
Please stop with this shit, AAF. Regular football angles are better. There's a reason they use them. For San Diego, Nelson Spruce, the Spruce Goose himself, was doing most of the work in the passing game, hauling in 12 passes for 146 yards, including this 29-yarder from Mike Berkovici in the third quarter. Another camera angle that makes you feel seasick despite watching the game on your couch. Drunk. That might be the reason. Right before half, though, Mike Berkovici makes the throw of his season, accompanied by the catch of his season from tight end Marcus Baugh, who lets two Arizona defenders take each other out while he trots to the end zone. Did he celebrate too early, though? Should this be a fumble? Damn right it should, but the evidence is inconclusive. The call stands. How many times does this have to happen for players to learn? Deshaun Jackson, Danny Trebathan, Trendon Holiday, please, for the love of God, hold on to the fucking football. It's not even a cool celebration to let it go after you cross the goal line. Nothing makes a player look dumber than this. And that includes Gus Farratt's self-induced concussion celebration. With the game still within eight points halfway through the fourth quarter, John Wolford dropped back, saw no one open, decided to run, and somehow, even though he looked like he was ready to get tackled, the hit never came, and he ran 35 yards right through the heart of the San Diego defense for the game-clinching touchdown. Arizona missed the two-pointer, but tacked on another field goal before the end of the game to make the final score 32-15, setting up a two-way race to the championship between Arizona and San Antonio in the West. And the AAF game everyone has waited for their entire life, the iron at the Johnny Manziels. They're calling this the greatest upset in sports history. By them, I mean the same guys who kept saying the AAF app was number one in the app store, even though none of us had ever seen it at number one. My biggest takeaway is the Alliance needs more stars. If Johnny Manziel can sell out jerseys that fast, the AAF needs to step the fuck up and bring in guys who will get more eyeballs to the sport. Otherwise, they're likely to get their asses kicked by the XFL. I mean, Manziel only threw five passes in this game and he has his own every Manziel play highlights on YouTube right now. This game was the proverbial cock tease because obviously everyone tuned in to see Johnny Manziel run around and throw a bunch of interceptions. And not only did he not throw any picks, he only threw five passes. Instead, it was the Memphis starter, Brandon Silvers, who played well enough to keep Johnny Football on the sideline for most of the game. In fact, Silvers looked like the best quarterback in the league this weekend, and nobody gives a shit because his backup is way more popular. Silvers threw for 266 yards and a pair of touchdowns in this game. The impressive part? The first touchdown came with 24 seconds left in the game to tie it, and the second was in overtime to win it, which was this 10-yard touchdown to Danielle Williams. So basically, he played well, and Manziel played well in limited opportunities, going three for five for 48 yards, including this pass down the sideline to Pig Howard, plus two runs for 20 yards. Manziel was the leading rusher for the Express in this game, and that's all anybody should remember. That's it. On the other side, Luis Perez, who Ben Albright called Diet Flacco on Twitter, played well again, throwing his fourth and fifth touchdowns of the year. But the iron lost because Trent Richardson, like an idiot, averaged a ridiculously high 3.5 yards per carry. After the game, when asked about Richardson's selfishness, all Diet Flacco could say was, I'm, I'm shocked. Shocked? Trent doesn't care about this team, and certainly shocked he doesn't even care about America. The Iron were up 19 to eight when the Express blocked a punt that Terrell Bonds ran back for 57 yards and the touchdown. Terrell Bonds is of course the love child of the two most hated athletes of the 2000s. And that's your week seven AAF recaps. I hope they were satisfactory. Uh, I'm on the fence about whether or not I'll continue with the AAF prediction videos. Uh, I'm sorry, they're time consuming and I don't think you give a shit 
and I want to try to make better videos. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Fuck you, Orlando. Son of a bitch. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna if you want to follow me there, especially if you want updates about the touch football games I play over the weekends. Also give at Will Key 6 a follow on Twitter. He helps me write all this football stuff here. He is underpaid, so at least make him popular on Twitter.